Hello, and welcome back to AATV. I'm your host, Tom Anvil Hibbard. In this episode, we're going to go over the cosmetic changes I've made to my GHK-based L119A2. If you want to know more about the L119A2, then we have an earlier episode available on the channel. In that episode, we built it up from components and went over the history of the real firearm. It finished up looking something like this. Since then, I've finally been able to take it out to play at Gunman's Descent Mill Film Sim, both in the day and I had a great spell out at night. Keep watching to find out how I used 3D prints and Millipart to sculpt a monolithic style upper receiver and then I painted it. Hey, welcome back to AATV. This is going to be the final part of the L119A2 uh, project. So this is cosmetics. Basically, I'm changing the upper receiver to make it look more like a monolithic, proper monolithic L119A2. So I've separated the upper from the lower, taken the bolt and out, and taken the handguard off. Uh, I will be offering up the handguard to the upper in order to make things fit but it's off at the moment. To do this I'm going to use a combination of things. I've got some 3D printed parts from Bruno, thank you Bruno, uh, which I'm going to add to the upper, epoxy them on and then where, where there's any gaps or spaces I want to fill up I'm going to use some mini putt. So people have been doing the Millipart mod for a while and fully sculpting the whole thing. Uh, this should reduce the time needed, but there will be a bit of gap filling and some additional work needed as these don't quite fit the GHK receiver in the way I would like, but there's little gaps under there, for example. But once they're on and I've blended them in with Millipart, should be all right. So I'm gonna take this slowly. It's been a long time since I used Millipart. So the first thing we need to do is I'm gonna do this left-hand side of the upper going to add this piece so first thing we we'll do is we're going to epoxy it down now this is not a short process so be prepared for things to take a while and have to put some work in and um, we're going to paint this afterwards so I'm not too worried about the white so the first thing you need to do when using any sort of glue is clean off the glue surface or clean off the surface you're going to glue to on both sides and then generally you want to roughen up the part a little bit so the glue has a better key to stick to. So I'm just going to do a little bit of abrasion to the upper here and on the underside of this bump on this side and then I'm going to glue it off. So I'll see you in a bit. Oh, white spirit, clean up, get rid of the dirt that I've left from the sanding and Remove any oil. Let's do a test fit. Mix up a little bit of aerodite. Aerodite is a two part epoxy resin. You need to mix up two parts. So you need to use equal amounts. And I use it, I need, I need a tiny little bit for this. So this goes off in about. 10 minutes and it'll take a couple of hours to dry properly. So once this is set, we have to walk away for an hour or two. Maybe you'd never put the white cap on the red tube. And the red cap on the white tube. Right. Now the scary bit, you might want to wear gloves whilst using any sort of adhesive in case you're sensitive. Use them in a very well wet and ventilated area. I'm in the garden room workshop. And I've got the door patio doors open, so there's plenty of air coming in. Don't need loads, light coat. Scary bit. Drop it on. Make sure everything's clear. Be very, very, very careful when you do this. You might want to get epoxy onto your rail. You'll never get too far. What I'm going to do is pop a. So we popped on this scope just to lock the front and the rear together. 
and then I'm going to position the bump where I want it and then set it down and leave it. It should all stay together. Okay, so about 10 minutes after taking off the rail, I'm doing now just a tiny little bit of excess glue. So before it completely cures, I'm going to take it off with a sharp knife using a blade from a Stanley knife or box cutter. And it's still just a little bit rubbery. Don't need to go mad because I'm going to put the Millie Pup onto this edge here anyway and blend it in. That's the excess glue. I've taken off that. Give it back so it's dried nicely. Next thing we do, we're just going to blend the edges in the rest of the receiver, and I need to fill in this and make it continuous all the way across the top. So, to do that, we're going to use Millie Pot, which is a two part epoxy putty. This one is the black version. In the same way, the aerodite needs to be mixed, we're going to need to mix this stuff as well. It takes about 40 minutes really to go off, but it's still quite um, rubbery and movable for a while. It doesn't really cure four hours, but you do have a bit of working time afterwards. Uh, I really don't need much for this. And again, equal parts. The best way to do this is to get these into long sausages. So you've got plenty of time to work with it, completely hang around. But... So you need to do this for at least four or five minutes. If you're sensitive, wear gloves for this. I'm going to wash my hands straight after kneading this. So while you're doing this, a few tools. Uh, you can get proper sculpting tools. I've just got some different shaped objects. So I've got a standing knife blade, very flat, sharp. I've got the end of a screwdriver, a spoon, and I've got this brush, I can use both the brush and I can use the end of the round end as well. Give me some different shapes to work with. And I used to do a lot more of this sort of stuff when I worked at Gaze Workshop, so it's been a while. So I don't want any Millie Part my serial number. I'm just also going to tape that up. And the Millie Part also likes a key to work off. And down. Get really hard shot. It's a very thin sausage material into the gap and now I'm just smoothing out that with that's let so there we go that's how we got to that's only with a rough with the paint job on that's gonna blend in really nicely so we'll come back in 40 minutes or so when it's cured right we're back and uh, we're getting on with the mods this is now pretty much dried on this side Pretty happy with that. I'm gonna give it overnight before I get in there and do any more work to it, but in general. So I have a confession, I've cheated on you. <laughs> Whilst you're away, I epoxied this extra bump into place. So I'm gonna blend that in again with just some tiny little fillets of Millie Pup are all around the edges. And also I want to make sure that the top of this surface here and top of this surface are parallel so I can do a bit of work with that. So we come to the last section really, which is over here. So I do have this piece to drop on. It does a lot of the work for me, but I still need a bit of blending in, particularly around the top of the injection port. And around here into the cartridge case deflector. Save a lot of time. I did have to cut down or sand down this top surface a little bit. What I want to do first though, if there's a little void here, I'm going to fill with some Millipup. 
it doesn't need to be aesthetic because it's just in here, but I'm going to fill it in anyway. Okay, all good. I just need to let this cure. Probably start again either late this evening or early tomorrow for the last few stages. Right, day two in the L119A2 sculpting house. And we're moving on to the biggest bit we're going to be doing, which is this section I have on here. So first thing we need to do is prepare the surfaces and Epoxy that down. So yesterday we did this block and I blend it into the rest of the support later today. We filled in this bump, filled in the section here to give support to this really pretty part. That all looks up nicely. And then we did the bump on the other side, filled in this section here, added this 3D printed part and again blended it in. So looking really good, pretty pleased so far. First things first, I'm going to clean down the glued area. This is the last bit of that about glue I'm going to be doing.
Leave that to dry. Okay, so we're on day three. Um, day one, we did this side. Day two, I did this side and did the blocking out. Today, we're going to just do a bit of filing, sanding, get these nice and smooth and blended in. And then hopefully, if the weather holds, I'm going to paint, which is super exciting. So I'll just get on with filing down. Uh, not much to do, mainly on this lug here, so blend this in so it all sits flat. A bit of filing on the top here. This is all pretty good around here. Uh, and then I'm just going to fill it off this edge nicely. Okay, get on with it. Right, at some point, you kind of just need to stop. So I'm going to stop here. So, a bit of clean up to do before I paint. Uh, see you later.
So that's it. It's finished. Well, let's be honest, they're never really finished. And I've already swapped out the clone weapon light for a real surefire. If you enjoyed this episode, then please like, subscribe and ding that bell to receive notifications of when we upload. We also have a Patreon scheme that you can join to help us stay as independently as possible. Most importantly though, stay safe and we'll see you next time.